there's a mystery. Even though the whale has enormous teeth, they leave no dent on the squid. When you're looking at the stomach contents of sperm whales, the squid are coming in either whole or in halves and they don't have teeth marks on them. How can a whale capture and swallow the biggest, baddest squid in the ocean without leaving a single mark? We need a working set of whale jaws to unravel this mystery in the lab. Chris Wheatley, Justin Buckingham, and Mike Latham will build the jaws. They turn to our whale expert, Professor Scott Baker. In the whale, is there anything special we should be trying to recreate that's um, really significant in that animal? Well, I think the shape of the jawbone is going to be critical because we don't really know what the function of the jaw is. We don't know that it's primarily a weapon. What's the evolutionary tactic to growing these humongous teeth and not using them to bite things? Well, not that they're not used for clasping. If the team can build an accurate set of jaws and teeth, we might at last discover how the whale uses them. How big would a tooth be? A big. Do they only have one row of teeth on the bottom? Do they not have teeth on the top of the jaw? They have no teeth on the top. Quite unusual, isn't it? Very unusual, but quite a few of the squid feeding animals have lost teeth entirely. How do the teeth actually work? Do they go into a socket or are they... There is what, a what, socket. What, what, it's like a, a gum-like socket. Is that right? Well, we could do that. Yeah. We've got half as many teeth to make. That's not too bad, is it? <laughs> <laughs> They're building the biggest bite on Earth. The challenge, these jaws need to be huge, heavy, and powerful. Chris, the designer, creates a blueprint for the modelers and engineers. Sperm whales have up to 40 teeth, solid pegs that can grow to seven inches. Justin and his team carve each tooth out of dense plastic foam. The foundry crew packs the plastic teeth in sand, then pours in molten aluminum. The liquid metal vaporizes the plastic and takes its place. Now all the teeth need is a polish. Mike and his engineers recycle a small crane jib to make the jaw. The whole system will need to be mobile so it can move into the test lab. Solution, modified bulldozer tracks and turbocharged hydraulic power. As the engineers assemble the jaws, our experts are chomping at the bit. Well, we've actually got larval squid at this point in time alive. Mm -hmm. And these squid will coordinate together and they will take down prey that's two to two and a half times their size. These are little wee larval squid. Mm -hmm. Now, if the adults are doing the same thing, let's say we've got four or five colossals on you, you're in big trouble. Big trouble, I don't know, certainly painful. Mm -hmm. But still, I'd say it, it instinctual at that level. And the sperm whale has the advantage of intelligence and experience. So if it's been attacked by one, it's already got a strategy for dealing with one. If it's attacked by two or three, it will know that that's going to come to follow. Time to bear the world's biggest bite. Steve. Oh, I don't know. What is the special effects that you need to try and conquer my squid? No, the whale doesn't need that. What is this? 12 feet of jaw, 40 teeth, 7 inches, 60 feet, 40 tons. Bigger they are, the harder they fall. You don't stand a chance. Come right, on. Right. Time will tell, Scott. Talk about jaws of death. They're not for show. 
So let's see how strong they really are. To establish the bite power of the sperm whale, we need to reproduce known behavior and measure the force involved. We're gonna smash some stuff? I vote we break something, mate. Well listen, I've been doing some reading and I understand that whales are capable of smashing up boats. You know Moby Dick and all that, which is based on a true story. We do have the records of attacks of sperm whales on whaling ships really? from the 19th century. Yeah, the famous case that gave rise to the legend of Moby Dick was the sperm whale that attacked the uh, whaling vessel Essex in 1820 and destroyed it in, in just two or three passes at the boat, ramming it. But there were numerous cases where the, the whales destroyed whaling boats, that is really? the smaller oar and sail powered boats that were used for the open boat hunting. Oh yeah, and I mean the depictions of this in the 19th century, the jaw collapsing the 19, 20 foot whaling boats were not, you know, those were taken from direct experience. Really? These big sperm whales are capable of smashing big boats. I happen to bring a big boat. So I figure we put it in the jaws and we, we just sort of use the minimal amount of force to squish it. It'll be sort of the place where we can start knowing that they are capable of this much force. What do you think? Oh, it's science. The boat should give us a ballpark figure of the sperm whale's jaw power. I want you to use the minimal amount of force required to smash this boat so that we have some way of calibrating how strong these things are. The team will increase the power until the boat starts to crack. A little bit more. The hydraulic system's pressure gauge will give us the numbers. Oh, okay. yeah, we got some teeth through. Okay, how much force is that? It's 1,600 now. So the sperm whale has a bite force of at least 1,600 pounds. Keep going, keep going. Three quarters of a ton. Yep, that'll do. <laughs> we'll take it up to about 1,850. It's 1,800 now? Yep, and right up. Okay, keep biting. Okay, okay keep coming up. It's 1850 now. The mystery deepens. That mighty chomp should tear squid to shreds. So why are squid found intact inside dead whales? We'll take it up to that 1850. The animators have equipped our virtual sperm whale with 47 inch teeth and at least 1,600 pounds of bite force, enough to take on man or beast.